Ooh, we're back to the sake drinking sensei background. You know what that means. Or do you? Hello there, I am Doofy Doo, and this is episode 47 of the Doofy Doo Talk to Ripshire and the Wanderer. We're back in this desert. <laughs> it's like a desert for no reason. I'm gonna take out this skull wizard, get a little bit of experience. Sometimes the skull wizard will transform you into another enemy on the floor. And if it happens to be like a bow boy or crossbow boy, you can get a lot of arrows. So I like to fight skull wizards, even though they have that 25 HP lightning spell. Ho ho! <laughs> Remember when I did the time attack? I told you sometimes you hit a room with a lot of the same kind of enemy. This is kind of what it is, but in time attack there would be like four or five hell reapers. This is a kind of a critical moment. But fortunately, I have lots of staffs. Uh, this episode... Oh, cursed P. Darn it. I think I got another one somewhere. Hmm, there it is. This episode, I am going to talk about the changes I will make to fix this bonus dungeon and make it difficult. I'm going to make it pretty difficult, even a little bit more difficult than Bufu's Cave. Because right now, I think we can all agree, this is a pretty easy dungeon. I said before, I'm going to change the curse system. So, there's going to be a permanent curse, temporary curse. So you could equip a cursed item and then wear it for a few floors and the curse will wear off. And uh, same thing for blessings. Temporary blessing is going to enhance the abilities of your item just a little bit. You can get that permanent if you bless it again. That is so that I can equip you with a permanently cursed trap armband at the beginning of this dungeon. Whoa! That was kind of anticlimactic. Ah, uh, so what floor am I on? 16 already. So I guess Scroll Cave is 16 floors long. If you want to, you don't have to talk to Gaibara. You can just keep going down the stairs, but... I'm gonna go ahead and end this bonus dungeon. Build up my confidence a little bit. I think I'm gonna fight this Hell Reaper just so I can have kind of a boss battle, sort of. <laughs> Use up some of these items. Hey, Gaibara, you wanna watch me fight this dude? Hmm, what shall I do to kill it? I think I'm just gonna use my I Feel Your P staff. Heh <laughs> Not even gonna fight you! Stop hitting yourself! Stop hitting yourself! <laughs> Back in the 80s, people used to do that all the time. I don't know if kids do that anymore. Alright, I guess that was the boss battle for this bonus dungeon. I'll go ahead and get naked. Talk to Gaibara. That ended so quickly. That's what she said. Well, I'm done with it and I haven't even told you about the changes I'm gonna make. What are you gonna do? Throw jars at it? <laughs> Although I guess if he has an infinite supply of vending jars, he probably will be fine. <laughs> um, so I changed the curse system to give you a permanently cursed trap arm at the beginning of the dungeon. Remember I said I'm gonna get rid of the multipliers, get rid of the scroll of chains, Get rid of the super trap scroll, so the only way to uh, trap a flying monster... <laughs> <laughs> I beat it with nothing, I'm awesome! No, I just took it off right at the end. The only way to trap a flying monster is to throw a trap at it, so that makes the game quite a bit more difficult. I'm also going to change the behavior of the traps. Right now, a natural trap you can use forever. I'm going to make it so any monster tripping a trap eventually will break it. Even a trap that's just naturally there that you haven't picked up. So all traps are going to eventually disappear. And I'm going to eliminate all equipment. <laughs> hey old woman. Well we finally beat one bonus dungeon. So one down and uh, let's see. One, two, three, four to go. No I still need to do Bufus Cave. Five to go. So we've got a long way to go yet. Ah, uh, broken traps. If you save up enough broken traps and give them to Faye, you gotta save up a ton though to get anything good. He'll uh, he'll give you items in return for them. Ah, uh, uh, we're getting to the point where I'm gonna have to start hoarding a few items. I don't think I have a five slot jar of holding. I think the biggest I have is a four slot. In this venting jar, I'll save the venting jar. Put it somewhere. You gotta be careful, don't wanna put it next to my stuff in case I accidentally detonate it. Hmm, 
There's a lot of stupid things you can do in your storehouse to accidentally um, kill yourself. Because remember, I only have 15 HP. Uh, if you have one of those Indulu false idol guys and you accidentally throw it, <laughs> then those guys will kill you really quickly. If you accidentally eat some uh, Wiggy Bell meat, the bell that summons other monsters, the monster you summon will kill you. So you can still die, even in your storehouse. Sure, the Wanderer is a brutal, brutal game. You're never safe. <laughs> Alright, I think I'm gonna put my broken traps in a four slot jar hole and just set it down over here. Uh, where was I? Oh! I'm gonna make it so you can't find any equipment in Scroll Cave, so no swords or shields. That is a big, big deal, but I've tested this out and it is possible to beat it with these rules. So you're only gonna get herbs or herbs and staffs and scrolls. And uh, the final change I'm gonna make, the rice ball trap is only going to heal the rice baby family. It will not level them up. I can hear some of you groaning right now. Oh, I love my best experience gaining trip. It's just too easy. It's too easy to get a rice master. And on the way you can get a rice ball and kill the rice master. I don't wanna nerf the rice ball trick. So, cause I think that's pretty cool. So that's the fix. The only way you're going to get rice balls is if I actually put rice changers on some of the floors. I don't think there are on any floors right now. Um, maybe they are. But anyway, I'll put them on some of the floors and rotten trap. You're going to get some rotten rice balls. So those are the changes I'm going to make to Scroll Cave to fix it. I've kind of play tested this just a little bit. It's very, very difficult, but doable. Um, so I think that makes that bonus dungeon more worthy of being a bonus dungeon. Right now it's it's so, like I said, it's easier than Table Mountain. A bonus dungeon shouldn't be easier than Table Mountain. Alright, let's check and see what... Hey, Smith's Apprentice, what's going on? Um, excuse me? Oh yeah, he's showing you his moves alright. I see what's going on here, day after day. Watching a sweaty, muscular man pound his rod. Haha, <laughs> you sure, sure does make you happy. I know what that feeling is. How dare you, sir? How dare you take advantage of this innocent apprentice? You, you have abused the teacher-student relationship. Good day, sir. You know what? You know what? I hope you're both very happy. I hope you both have a wonderful life together. Let me find something to throw at you. There we go. Take this pole on plus two and shove it up your forged pole. No. <laughs> Pants Weasel, I thought she was the one. How could I have been so blind? We had so much in common. We both like swords and walking in place, talking and not talking. <laughs> well, fine then. I don't need her. We don't need her at all, do we, Pants Weasel? We're ready for attempt three in Bufu's cave. Go take my frustration out on some bouncing beaver heads. All right, hopefully the third time is the charm. I am back in Bufu's cave. Uh, after that cool desert tile set, this tile set looks a little bit drab. Accurately reflecting my dour mood after finding out that the Smith Apprentice has been cheating on me all this time. Do you think I overreacted, Pants Weasel? Throwing a, a giant bladed spear into the face of the Smith? No, no. I, I, I was totally cool. I, it doesn't even bother me now. <laughs> Alright, what am I going to name this? The Freedom Purse. Um, no. Once again, I've thought of a name that takes up too many spaces. Hmm. Yeah, I should probably stick with my masculine theme, huh? What is a, a man purse called? A Merce. <laughs> I'll try to make it the most masculine name I can think of. How about... Uh, has to be something manly. Hmm. <laughs> I could be a total jerk and just have like five minutes of the episode be me thinking up and discarding names for the jar of storage. <laughs> All right, what am I going to... How about the man -merse? Um, hmm, it still needs more man. <laughs> the man -merse for men. Notice how I spelled four with the number. That means it's super high-end and expensive. Ah, uh, mini robber. You're, you're a sight for sore eyes. 
All right, I did not expect to be in Bufus Cave this long. Maybe I was overconfident, but I really thought I would just get it on my first attempt. Because usually I, I don't have quite this much trouble. But this time, I will be extra careful. And I vow that nothing will take me down. That's right. I am going to beat Bufus Cave this run. Oh, or maybe not. Uh, you know what? I'm a speed heal. Yeah, that's right. There's no mammals around me. All right. Do you hear that, cheering gods? Your puny big landmine traps cannot stop me. <laughs> I'm going all the way. Uh, but like I said, I did not plan to do this many runs in Boo's Cave, so I had kind of like general topics I was going to talk about for each one, and I ran out of topics. I think what I'm just going to do is brainstorm some new monster ideas uh, for a redesign of Sheeran. Because you can always use more monsters, and there's some of these are going to be borrowed from other versions of Sheeran. But some of them I'm just going to think up, and I haven't played every single Sheeran sequel, so they're probably already... Hey! I already got a backup Boopus Cleaver, so cursing can't stop me. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling alright. Totally forgot about stupid Smith's Apprentice and that sexy blacksmith. <laughs> um... Yeah, some of the monster designs I think up, you might be watching, you're like, hey, they already made that design. It's it's just coincidence. Because, like I say, I, I only am really familiar with the other monsters in Sheeran DS2. And uh, Sheeran 3 for the Wii, I never really made it through all the bonus dungeons because I got bored. Because that game is kind of not very good. <laughs> so I only know some of the monsters from that game. All right, we're getting close to uh, the end of the episode here, I think. I don't want to make this go too long. So for the first monster design, I'll just borrow one from Sheeran DS2. There is a grenade chucking robot. I feel like we need more explodey enemies. There's only the spiky bomb and the tanks. So one more explodey enemy. The grenade chucking robot throws grenades kind of like a snot piggy throws rocks, and they blow up and do splash damage. Um, and again, the trap bot, he needs some company too. Have another robot. Looks kind of like a robotic gorilla, sort of. I like that design. It's another explodey enemy. It can level up easily because it does splash damage, but it doesn't have the same range as a tank, and it's not gonna, it's gonna be able to toss grenades over other monsters. So, that is a pretty dangerous enemy. I would like to add that to a redesign, even if it's only in a bonus dungeon. That is the first monster we are going to brainstorm. We'll just steal it directly from another game. And as it levels up, of course, the range on its explosions is going to increase. All right, this is a good time to end the episode. If you have any wacky monster ideas, please let me know. Next week will be Labor Day weekend, so we will celebrate with a special Doofy Doo cookout episode. That'll be fun. Another summer has come and gone so quickly. I'll see you all next week. Goodbye. Haven't won a run in a long time. See, the runs I've had could make a sane man mad. So for once in my life, let me finish this run. Although I really should have won the second time. Um, excuse me?